respiratory system. Respiratory tract consists of two major uh, subdivisions. Conducting pulsion delivers air to respiratory tissues and is characterized by rigid walls. It consists of nasal cavities, pharynx, larynx, trachea, and the various subdivisions of the bronchial tree till the terminal bronchioles. Respiratory portion includes structures within the lung where gaseous exchange occurs. It consists of respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs, and alveoli. Nose. The nasal cavity is divided into three distinct areas. The vestibule is the anterior part behind the nostrils lined with hairy skin anteriorly and the stratified squamous non-carotinized epithelium posterior. The epithelium contains sepacious and sweet grains and short hairs called vipressi. Respiratory area is present in the posterior part of the nasal cavity. It is lined with pseudostratified collaminar ciliated epithelium with gobly cells resting on a highly vascular connective tissue corium containing mucocerous glands. Olfactory area is present in the upper part of the nasal cavity in its roof and is lined with olfactory mucosa. Made of pseudostratified collaminar ciliated epithelium without gobly cells and corium. Olfactory epithelium is like any other sensory epithelium is formed of nerve cells or receptor cells, then supporting cells and renewal cells which are basal cells. Olfactory or receptor cells. They are bipolar nerve cells connected to supporting cells by junctional complex desmosomes. Their dendrites extend to the surface to terminate as olfactory vesicles, from which olfactory hairs, non-motile cilia, arise. The axons pass to the corium, forming the olfactory nerves. They can regenerate. Supporting our sustentacular cells, they are high collaminar cells with a wide apical pars and a thin basal pars lying on the basement membrane. Their free borders are covered with microvilli, which are bathed in a thin film of serous fluid secreted by Bowman's glands in the corium. They have oval nuclei arranged in one or two rows. Their cytoplasm contains a yellow pigment. Basal cells, they are short, triangular cells with round, darkly stained nuclei resting on the non-clear basement membrane. They are undifferentiated stem cells capable to divide and regenerate the other two types of cells. Corium is a highly vascular, dense, fibroelastic connective tissue contains serous glands, the baumas glands, that open on the epithelial surface and secrete a serous fluid to keep the surface always moist, freshens the olfactory cilia and acts as a solvent for the odorous gases. Pharynx is a transitional space between the oral cavity and the respiratory and digestive systems. It is subdivided into nasal, nasopharynx, oral, oropharynx, and laryngeal, laryngeopharynx. The pharyngeal walls consist of mucosa, musculosa, and adventitia. The nasopharynx and laryngeopharynx 
aligned by pseudostrate fine collaminar ciliated epithelium with gobless cells as they are connected with the respiratory passages, while the oropharynx is lined with stratified squamous epithelium as it is connected with the oral cavity and the esophagus. Larynx connects the pharynx with trachea. It acts as a phonating organ as well as a respiratory passage. It contains the vocal cords which are considered lower bear of folds, formed of bundles of elastic fibers and bundles of skeletal muscles, vocal muscles, covered by stratified squamous non-cratinized epithelium. Larynx is kept open by a number of cartilages embedded in its wall. And these cartilages are of two types. Hyaline cartilage as thyroid, cricoid, and aletinoid, and yellow elastic cartilage as epiglottis, colnoculate, and cuneiform. It is lined with pseudostratified collaminar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells. Trachea. Both trachea and extrapulmonary bronchi are similar. They are formed of the following layers. Mucosa, epithelium, respiratory epithelium, which is pseudostratified collaminar ciliated epithelium, resting upon thick basement membrane, formed of the following cells. Ciliated collaminar cells with active motile cilia that beat in the direction of the pharynx. Goblet cells. Brush cells with microvilli contain glycogen granules. It is of unknown function, but may be sensory cells or exhausted goblet cells. Basal stem cells, which do not extend to the lumen, these cells are capable of division and may be helpful in renewal of the other cell types. Neuroendocrine or small granule cells or ABUG cells. These cells secrete serotonin and calcitonin, then migrating lymphocytes and mast cells. Corium of loose connective tissue rich in elastic fibers, then elastic lamina formed of elastic fibers. Submucosa formed of loose connective tissue containing mucocerous glands. Fibrocartilaginous layer or supporting layer formed of loose connective tissue containing a C-shaped plate of hyaline cartilage which is completed posteriorly by the tracheales muscle, smooth muscle. The C-shaped cartilaginous rings keep the trachea always open for the passage of air and render the tracheal wall flattened where it faces the esophagus in order not to interfere with the passage of food down the esophagus. Then, adventitia, formed of loose connective tissue. The lungs are the principal respiratory organs. There are two lungs, the right and left. They are covered by a serous membrane, the pylora, which is formed of loose connective tissue covered by mesothelium. Each lung receives an extrapulmonary bronchus which divides in the lung into an intrapulmonary bronchi, bronchioles, terminal bronchioles, respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs, and finally alveolar. The main bronchus, together with arteries, enter and veins and lymphatics leave the lung at the hilum, 
these structures are surrounded by connective tissue and constituting the pulmonary root. Connective tissue trapeculi divide the lung into three loops in the right lung and two loops in the left lung and several lobules which are pyramidal shaped lobules with the apex directed towards the hilum. Such lobulation is distinct in fetus and animals and in some diseases. Bronchial tree. Extrapalmonary bronchi have the same structure as the trachea, but with thin adventitia. Intrapalmonary bronchi, on the other hand, are different from extrapalmonary bronchi. Comparison between extrapalmonary bronchi and intrapalmonary bronchi. In order to easily remember the differences between the two, it is better to consider the various layers of each. Lumen. Extrapalmonary bronchi have wide lumen. Mucosa of extrapalmonary bronchi is less folded, only posteriorly. Epithelium is pseudostratified collaminar ciliated with goblet cells and neuroendocrine cells. Corium form it of connective tissue and there is elastic membrane in the mucosa. Intrapalmonary bronchi, on the other hand, have narrow lumen, highly folded mucosa. Epithelium is the same, but with few goblet cells. Connective tissue corium is of loose areolar type. Elastic fibers are distributed between the cartilage blades and the adventitia not present in the mucosa. Submucosa. Extrapalmonary bronchi have a definite submucosa, while intrapalmonary bronchi have no definite submucosa. Muscle layer. Extrapalmonary bronchi have muscle fibers present posteriorly bridging the gap between the ends of the C-shaped hyaline cartilage rings, while Intrapalmonary bronchi have smooth muscle fibers arranged spirally encircling the whole lumen. Supporting layer is in the form of C-shaped cartilaginous rings in the wool of extrapalmonary bronchi, but in the form of multiple plates of cartilage connected by connective tissue in the wool of intrapalmonary bronchi. Mucous glands and lymphatic nodules are present in the submucosa in case of extrapalmonary bronchi. But in intrapalmonary bronchi, such glands and lymphatic nodules are distributed between the plates of hyaline cartilage and also in the adventitia. Bronchioles. They are small tubes with narrow diameter, the wall of the bronchiole consists of mucosa formed of epithelium and lamina propria, muscle layer and outer layer of a connective tissue fibrosa. Comparison between bronchus and bronchiole. Lumen. Bronchus has wide patent lumen and mucosa less folded. Epithelium, pseudostratified collaminar ciliated with goblet cells. It may contain few neuroepithelial cells. Then, corium, loose areolar connective tissue. Bronchiole has narrow, may be collapsed lumen. Mucosa, highly folded. Epithelium. Large bronchioles aligned with simple collaminar ciliated cells, while small bronchioles aligned with simple cupoidal non ciliated cells alternating with clara cells. Clara cells are tall cells with well developed smooth endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi bodies. Their secretion is rich in protein to protect the epithelium. There is no goblet cells. 
But there is many neuroepithelial cells rich in nerve receptors, as they may act as chemoreceptors. Corium of loose annular connective tissue rich in elastic fibers. Muscle layer is formed of smooth muscles, which are arranged spirally, encircling the whole lumen in case of bronchus, and are arranged circularly with abundant elastic fibers in case of bronchiole. Supporting layer, there is multiple plates of cartilage connected by connective tissue in case of bronchus, but no cartilage are present in the wall of bronchioles. Glands and lymphatic nodules are present in the wall of the bronchus, but there is no such glands or lymphatic nodules in the bronchioles. Terminal bronchioles are similar to larger bronchioles, however, they are lined with simple collaminar or cubical, partially ciliated epithelium and clara cells. Respiratory bronchioles have a small diameter and are lined with simple cubical epithelium, clara cells and ciliated cells, the muscle layer is very thin. They receive the openings of some alveoli, hence the name of respiratory procures. Alveolar ducts are lined with simple cubical epithelium. Smooth muscle fibers are very few. They receive the openings of some alveolar sacs and alveoli. Alveolar sacs are group of alveoli lined with flat cells and they have no muscle fibers. Alveoli are thin-walled polyhedral air-containing cavities lined with alveolar epithelium. Adult lung showing multiple alveoli which are wide thin-walled cavities lined with simple squamous epithelium. Intrapulmonary bronchi have folded mucosa. There is no submucosa. The mucosa is lined with pseudostratified collaminar ciliated epithelium with goblet cells, resting on corium of loose areolar connective tissue. There is a muscle layer formed of smooth muscle fibers arranged spirally encircling the whole lumen. Supporting layer is formed of plates of hyaline cartilage connected together by connective tissue. Mucocerous glands and lymphatic nodules are embedded in the connective tissue between the plates of cartilage. Intrapulmonary bronchioles, on the other hand, have highly folded mucosa. There is no submucosa. The mucosa is lined with simple collaminar or cubical partially ciliated epithelium alternating with clara cells. There is no goblet cells. The mucosa is resting on a corium of loose areolar connective tissue. Muscle layer is formed of smooth muscle fibers arranged circularly with abundant elastic fibers. There is no supporting layer, no cartilage, no glands or lymphatic nodules, but there is outer connective tissue layer on the surface of the muscles. Lung alveoli and blood air barrier. Alveoli are thin walled polyhedral air containing cavities connected together through the alveolar bores. They are separated by the interalveolar septa containing elastic and reticular fibers. Alveoli aligned by alveolar epithelium consisted of two types of cells. Type 1 pneumocytes are the main cells lining the alveoli 
about 97%, joined together by tight junctions. They are flat cells with flattened nuclei. They form a thin layer to allow for the exchange of gases. Type 2 pneumocytes are large, rounded cells with vacuolated cytoplasm and their free surface have short microvilli. They are rich in cell organelles and contain also large electron-dense multilamellar granules. They secrete surfactant, a phospholipid, which forms a thin film on the surface of the alveoli to prevent their collapse during expiration. Lack of surfactant causes respiratory distress syndrome found in premature babies. Type 2 pneumocytes are stem cells capable to divide and regenerate both cell types in alveolar epithelium. Blood air barrier is the barrier through which exchange of gases takes place and it separates the air inside the alveoli from the circulating blood in the blood capillaries and consists of film of surfactant, the alveolar epithelial cells, cytoplasm of pneumocytes 1, their basement membrane, a reticular connective tissue containing macrophages, basement membrane of the capillary endothelium, the cytoplasm of the endothelium of blood capillaries. Fetal lung. It appears lobulated with collapsed alveoli, lined with cubical cells. Fetal lung resembles a gland in structure. The bronchial tree represents the duct system, while the alveoli and alveolar ducts represent the secretory units. Cartilage plates around the bronchi differentiate fetal lung from a gland. Pulmonary blood vessels are congested. Fetal lung sinks in water. So this helps to know whether the infant has died before or after delivery. This is for a medical legal importance. Alveolar phagocytes, dust cells and heart failure cells. They are phagocytic cells present free in the alveolar cavities. They are demonstrated by vital stains as tripan flu. Origin. They are derived either from histiocytes or from blood monocytes. Feet. They may be cuffed in sputum. They may be absorbed in situ. They may be absorbed by lymphatics to be destroyed in lymph nodes. Dust cells contain dust particles in their cytoplasm. In congestive heart failure, rupture of blood capillaries in the interalveolar septa will lead to escape of RBCs into the alveolar cavities. RBCs are attacked and engulfed by the dust cells. The cytoplasm of dust cells become full of hemosiderin granules, resulting from digestion of hemoglobin, and they are now called heart failure cells.